Hello everyone and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. In the last episode, we had a a little bit of a confrontation, you could describe it as, here outside the ether mine, and we were joined by Dunban. Dunban to the rescue. Well, I mean the rescue only works average, but but the rescue was there nonetheless. But in case anyone was wondering after the last episode, yes, we absolutely do have Dunban as a full-on party member. And he's great. He's very different to what we've experienced so far. So I'm going to um, decorate him a little. In case you're wondering, by the way, he comes with the anti-Mekon glaive. It actually works on Mekon, um, so you genuinely, it was fought for him by Dixon, and if you have this specific weapon equipped, Shulk does not have to do his Monado enchant to, to get Dixon, to get um, Dunban to hit Mekon. It's great. I mean, that's ridiculous. I love it, but it's ridiculous. Also ridiculous. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Ridiculous, but kind of cool. There's a lot of that. Wow. Just wow. I do wish that not all of the heavy armor looked fucking dumb in this game, but there you have it. Wow. Again. With the petrol colored <laughs> pointy heels. Eh, we'll go for his kind of gentleman pirate look that he goes for as well. Fun fact as well, you'll notice that Dunban is now left-handed. Uh, his right hand is just completely fucked up. And actually, if we show off um, with uh, some different arms and and whatnot, you can actually see, yeah, his, his right arm is like horrifically covered in scars and stuff like that. Dunban's just left-handed for the entire rest of the game to account for that. So what does Dunban do? We'll show him off in battle a bit in the future, but his main thing is he's what I guess you call an agility tank. Um, he's a really hard hitter. He can deal a lot of damage very quickly, and he can gain the aggro quite easily. Unlike Ryan, who has high HP and high defense for tanking hits, Dunban's got really high agility. He's just really good at dodging attacks, um, which means he's better in lighter armor, and he's just kind of very flexible. He counters this. Well, this is countered by him having very low hit points compared to Ryan. He's got he's got half Ryan's hit points, um, so he can be a bit of a glass cannon if he's actually hit. Um, but let's go through some of his skill trees as well. He's got uh, bravery, which boosts counter attack rate, wisdom for agility, and prudence for block rate. Um, and I think strength when HP at max is pretty nice. No, ag greatly increases aggro when no armor is equipped. That's much better in this version because you don't have to have him be naked. We'll go for this one for now, what uh, um, strength when HP is at max. Sharla has unlocked, greatly boosts healing arts and chain attacks, so that's brilliant. Slightly annoying thing here is that Dunban starts off with yellow affinity with everyone. Even Shulkin and Ryan, who he's known for a, for a while. Um, but what can we get from him? Nah, none of those are particularly useful. That's handy. Um, and he already has that. Well, what can you give to people? Nothing, nothing, and medium armor to Ryan, which is useless. Uh, ooh, can you get a hexagon off Shulk? Healing Arts Missile. Is that receiving or giving? Well, let's put it on him for now anyway. Cool. Um, with that, I'm not going to go through his art just yet. We'll actually weirdly get onto that. So this episode, we're going to move some side stuff. Actually, entirely in Colony 9. We'll get onto Dunban in combat when we go through to Satoral Marsh, which will be next episode. Um, this one's just going to be some some guff around Colony Nine, so so we'll look at art properly then. We also now have the whole concept of we've got um, multiple party members. By the way, we've got another entrance to this thing here. I'm not going to go into it, um, but we will get around to that in the next. About three or four episodes time, I think. Um, but yes, now we have multiple party members. Art points, uh, skill points, and experience are now just gathered by your party members. All of them. Whether they are in your active party of three or not, they will still continue to level up fine. You don't have to worry about rotating party members around in order to, um, to get sufficient experience for everyone. Which is really nice, and a lot of games could could learn from that, and some have, like, Pokemon's got a bit better at that now, that it's nice that it's, you can play with whose playstyle you want to without having to worry about certain characters getting over or under leveled. It's very nice. Um, with that, yes, you'll notice as well, we came out kind of the other side, so this is all the splintered path and stuff like that. We came into the ether mine there, and we kind of came out on that side there for the freight road. Uh, so I'm just kind of walking back over, mostly just to get uh, a couple of... Skip, 
travel points. Oh, that's that's a bit of bionis up there. You can just see an arm coming down for the sword, so... Oh, what the fuck are you doing starting a fight? Well, we don't want to show off Dumban yet. We have, I mean, we technically very briefly last episode saw Dumban's arts. Um, because, um, because he was there and he is fully functional in that fight with... With... Metal, well, Metal Vaser's minions. Um, unfortunately, as you may have noticed, Dixon, less so. Uh, which is why Dixon in that combat, if you're paying attention, only has two arts. Uh, I thought this door was open now, but it's not. Um, so I guess this is as far as we go um, for now. So with that, once I'm not under attack by Antols anymore, there we go. Let's head back to Colony 9, and we'll first show off what Dunban can do. Well, we'll talk about what Dunban can do in the crafting world. So, we've got a lot of crystals from the ether mine. Um, so let's let's plan ourselves a little aggro up and strength up one, I guess. So Dunban, qualities go stronger while the flame is constant. Doesn't matter whether it's strong, which increases one thing a lot, medium, which increases everything, or gentle, which increases the cylinder gauge. Uh, as long as it's strong, constant, it builds up um, the same thing better. So he's better with characters like uh, Ryan, for example, who's really good with a strong flame. Unfortunately, as we'll start to see going forwards, literally nothing is better than the 8 to 12 crafting turns Shulk gets. So, like, Dunban and anyone gets 3 to 5 turns, whereas now Shulk, as the shooter with his fever thing, and Ryan with the kind of strong flame, get 8 to 12. There is pretty much no point in using any other characters in crafting at this point, um, because it's just outdone by the number of turns these guys get. But there we have that. I'm going to do an absolute crap ton of gem crafting. Gem crafting, good one with all of this. Um, and then we'll um, we'll go from there, I guess. Ooh, a lot of topple up. I have to remind myself, what does topple up do? Yeah, topple up is increases the damage dealt. Yeah, topple plus makes you more like. So topple will make your attacks more likely to topple. Topple plus increases topple duration, and topple up increases damage dealt to them. It's a real mess. We should be able to get this one nice and high though. Ah, we got a higher agility up gem there because we got heat on it, which is nice. This is better than usual. Oh, we got heat there, bringing ourselves up to a third level gem. Unfortunately, it's ether defense up, which is not one of the most useful ones. A lot of the cyan gems, the kind of ice type ones, are not the most useful effects. They're just kind of very situational. Wow, this is absolutely oh, really? I was hoping to get multiple ones to heat there. Um, but for some reason we just got, we rolled badly and got very few turns in that crafting. This is a good result. Oh, again, so close to getting multiple heat ones. And again, I got some cyan shit as my third level one. Also, actually, auto attack style is actually pretty handy. Uh, for sure, that's very handy because it means you can build up, uh, Monado gauge without having to worry about being, um, drawing too much aggro. Right. With that done, getting crafty, um, we have gathered quite a few um, gems, but I'm not actually going to put them on. I'm going to do equipment probably next episode, actually. For now, uh, we have someone I need to talk to next to the shop in this shopping district. So here is okay. Sonia. Hello there. Hmm, what should I make for dinner? Such a tough choice. Maybe cabbage parcels? They're my specialty, you know. And that registers Sonia in the affinity charge charge. Good one. Um, which means we can now get a new quest. Because now we have Sonya in the Infinity Chart, we can get a quest from... That was a lie. We needed to also come outside Dunban's house and speak to Liliana. No, come back here. I need you for the Infinity Chart. My dad is one of the stars shining in the night sky. He watches over me every night. That's why I gaze out the window to see him too. How very sad. Um, someone's definitely dead. Ah, there we go. Now we can get what we want. If we come over to the Gem Man stall, we have this quest here from Rocco. Oh, yeah. You like solving problems, don't you? Well, I've got a whopper. I broke my mum's pendant. She loved it so much. Dad gave it to her. Now mum's super angry and keeps making horrible mush for dinner. That is indeed a problem. Yes, I agree. If I don't eat some real food fast, my tongue, tongue, oh, my tongue's gonna toll off, good one. My tongue's gonna fall off. I tried to find someone who can fix my mum's pendant, but no one in the residential district can do it. I can't walk very far on my own, so can you find someone instead? I think Dean works at the, to be able to help. He works at the lab. Really? Thanks, Shulk. Does that mean you'll ask him for me? 
Find someone who can mend the keepsake. Um, this also brings us now to an idea of unique comments. S like, Shulk's coming there saying, Oh, I think I know someone who can do that. Only Shulk will say that. And now that we have multiple... We have more than three party members... We can actually miss those, but we're not going to, because I'm always going to include whoever um, says that for a given mission. So don't worry, you won't miss any content with me. You know my style by now. But this gives us Rocco's heartfelt request. Um, by the way, whatever you do, don't tell Sonya about this. She's my mom. Not a problem. Consider it done. Yeah, let's sort this out. Oh, and here's the pendant. Don't lose it or anything. And that gives us the broken pendant. Wonderful. To fix it, uh, as Shulk said, if we go, well, you can see where we need to go here, into the uh, military district. And down here in this alley, which isn't at all weird, we have Dean. Hi there. I only ever listen to the requests from people in my profession. If I hear everyone's requests, I'd never get anything done. If you have a request to, play, to make, please have Shulk ask me. What a wanker. I didn't know about that one. <laughs> I have got something to ask. I need you to fix a pendant that a boy named Rocco broke. I usually just tell people to sort out their own problems, but I suppose he's just a kid. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Hang on, I can fix this in no time. Hold on a moment. I completely invented hang on there. Here, good as new. Rocco, Rocco, that name sounds familiar. Isn't he Sonya's little boy? Yeah, that's him. Make sure you say that it was me who fixed it. That's all the thanks I need. Fix pendant, and he's, well... He's definitely got an angle, he's working there, and we'll get to that in time. For now, let's return to uh, Rocco. You got it fixed! Wow, you really did, just like it was before. Who fixed it? Huh? Dean from the lab? This Dean guy must be pretty awesome. When I grow up, I want to be able to fix things just like him. I hope I meet him so I can thank him properly. Anyway, thank you! And that completes Rocco's heartfelt request. And gets us uh, some glasses right. Who's ready for some sexism? Uh, glasses can only be worn by women. Ladies' glasses, just put them on to look intellectual. Yes, that's apparently a thing. Um, I don't even remember that being in the original game, but I'm sure it must have been. Um, and equally, like, the glasses type, at least that, those type of glasses, you can't... Um, only, only women can wear. Um, so that's fun. Anyway, with that, uh, well, first off... Uh, over in the corners of that red exclamation mark, which is Paula, as in Paula and Noreen. And I want to see if me and Ryan have got enough affinity yet. I'm pretty sure we have done to get the next level of that quest. No, come back here. There we go. Noreen wants to look me to do what? Take a look at the two boys. Why would she ask that? Oh, I get it. To check how good their friendship is. Hey, it's totally improved. Chuck and Ryan are looking much more like real best friends now. Oh, I'm so jealous. I wish me and Mar Noreen were like that. But I guess boys are different. Can girls be best friends like that? I bet they can't, you know. If you think otherwise, prove it. And this gives us the final one, which is... Raise the affinity between two female party members considerably, then talk to Paula. We don't even have two female party members, so that isn't going to happen for quite some time. Um, but what I want to do now is head back to Dean in the uh, military district, who's got a quest for us. Ah, it's you again. You remember how I did you a favor by fixing that pendant? Well, I need to call in that favor. I'm sure you know what this is about. Could you go into more detail? How should I put this? Basically, I want to have a date. <coughs> I mean, dinner with Sonya. I'm too embarrassed to ask you myself after all these years. Surely you can help me out after I fix that pendant for you. This may sound a bit rude, but isn't it a bit sad getting us to ask her? So this is Charles' unique comment. He's starting to see how these work. Oh, how odd. You remind me of Sonya. <laughs> Have we met before? Not interested, mister. Get back to why we're here. Please, uh, uh, you're mistaken. I, I never meant it like that. I, uh, <coughs> back to the topic at hand. Uh, will you help me? This is Dean Shady Request. A very accurate name. Uh, Dean wants our meal with Sonya. So, I don't mind how you do it. Just ask her out to dinner for me. So, we need to start by talking to Sonya, who is, of course, um, at the shops near the Etherlights. Oh, Dean wants to go out to dinner. <laughs> How cute of him to say that. To be honest, I'd love to say yes, but the problem is the kids. I can barely find time for myself because they squabble constantly. It's such a silly argument as well. It's all because of a shin gecko. Shin geckos are rare, you see. Thing is, then before I knew it, they started arguing before over who spotted it first. While the argument raged on, the shin gecko ran reco ge oh. The shin gecko rang off. Oh, the shin gecko rang off scared. Damn, I'm still saying rang off. Ah. Oh. The Shin Gecko ran off scared. There we go. Maybe if they could have one each as a pet, they'd calm down a bit. Then I'd feel happy inviting Dean over for dinner. 
So, we need to get two Shin Geckos, a Tefra Cave collectible, of which we already got at least two. Wonderful. Okay. Did you manage to find them? These are perfect. My kids are going to love these. I love the fact we've just got two live geckos kicking around. Wonderful. Now they should stop fighting. Thank you very much for your help. I'm glad everything worked out. Now, about this date of mine, could you go and tell Dean that any time is fine? Ooh, I'm getting all excited. And with that, we of course need to return to Dean. You did it! Now I can finally have a lovely evening with Sonia. I'll have to hurry if I want to get ready and not be late. Now I'll give you a reward when I get back. Just wait here. On second thought, don't wake up for me, winky face. Haha, <laughs> a date with Sonia at last. Well, that was the quickest dinner I've ever had. It went uh, sort of well, but I can't say it was a major success. Still, she invited me around to her house the next time, even if it is only as a babysitter. But I'm not going to give up. I'll take every chance I can get. And if I prove I'm a nice guy, eventually she'll give in. This is the uncomfortable vibes that this mission has. But that does indeed complete Dean's shady request and gets us an average gem. Um, and with that, uh, ooh, we get a Colony 9 Celeb, which is do a certain amount of missions either here, or is it get a certain level of affinity? Let's have a look at our achievements. Have a look at them for a while. Oh, yeah, we go. Achieved a three star affinity rating for the Colony 9 area, which is fantastic because the final quest in this arc requires three star affinity with Colony 9. As you can see, it's over with Liliana, who's Sonia's daughter, and as she mentioned when we first spoke to, spoke to her, her father died. I think he died in the Mechon Raid on, on Colony 9. There's a fair few characters we know that did, we'll slowly learn of, that did die in that. Um, but yes, if we talk to Liliana, they're here playing with their Shin Geckos. It was you who were, well, 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 what, 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 <laughs> turned into a trombone. Uh, it was you who went and helped out that man for Rocco, wasn't it? Well, now I need a favor. It's for my mom. Now that she's dating that geeky man, I'm worried about her. I think she's forgetting Dad. Sounds like you've got a problem. I agree, they look like they could use our help. You really think so, Sharla? I did Dunban's voice, but that was Sharla. Not that I do much of a different voice for the party members, but there we go. Before Dad died, he told me this. If Mom is ever in trouble, look in the little cave on Agora Shore. Dad must have left something important in that cave. I know it. You have to find it or else Mum will forget all about Dad. So please, could you search for whatever my dad left in that cave? If you really rem if you remember the people you've lost, they never really leave you. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'll never forget him. But we want I want Mum to never really forget him as well, so please. And this gives us Liliana's sincere request, which is to go to Agora Shore. You almost certainly won't know where Agora Shore necessarily is. It's right over here. We've never been there. Uh, and the best way to get there is actually to start at the Central Plaza and go a swimming. Speed her on, please. So over here is Agora Shore. It's full of a lot of pretty high level enemies, most of whom will avoid me. Including, I am hopeful, the big lad. <laughs> Which is this gentle Rodriguez. He is not gentle though, he will be incredibly rough with us if he spots us. Ooh, skill trees, who's got skills? Ooh, Shulk's made it further down here. Causes burst affinity for more of a part to gauge. Um, ah, so notice by the way, um, Ones that have a single person's face? I thought this was a keyhole when I first played this, but it's a person's face. Um, only affects Shulk, but ones with all three faces affect the whole party. So healing the friend part part uh, party slightly after a chain attack uh, affects everyone, but if you put it on multiple people, um, then it will... The, the effect will stack, which is pretty nice. And this one causes a burst of infinity to film more of the party gauge. A very handy one for everyone to have, so we'll probably have him um, keep working on that. See also increases the chance of a cha chain link. Ah, and Shala and, and Shulk have gone up in their affinity, which is nice, which lets us put this one on and recovers everyone more after a chain attack. Very nice. Because you haven't got any party gauge immediately after a chain attack, um, you're always in, I always find you're somewhat exposed, so... Handy to have that, definitely. Um, what I'm going to do here is see if I've got any... Let's sort these by... Colour? Nope, don't have an option for that. Uh, oh yeah, they automatically sort by colour, don't they? There we go, we have one Earth Cloak. Reduces detection range of ground monsters by 20%. Because I'm going to sneak around the big lad here. His detection range is pretty tight, as in pretty close to him, and with an Earth Cloak on and sticking close to the wall, you should be able to manage without having to fight Gentle Rodriguez to get 
Liliana's message in a bottle. Wonderful. <laughs> you see what we've just gone straight across there. A fun fact, by the way. Uh, I think we haven't actually been able to do it anywhere um, yet. But if you get all the landmarks and all the locations on a map, so you know stuff like Weapon Air, Dev, Anti-Air Battery 2. We didn't even get the one called Agora Shore because it's along there. But if you unlock every location and every landmark on a map, the entire map is just revealed for you. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, anyway, let's return to Sonya. Oh, yeah, I do need to take this back to Sonya. I was thinking it was supposed to be Liliana, but it's not. Can I help you with something? Hold on, this is the recipe I gave my husband before we married. This takes me back. I remember the very day I gave it to him. He said he wanted to eat my cabbage parcels every day. Good lord. <laughs> so I went ahead and wrote the recipe down and gave it to him. That way he could make it himself anytime he liked, I said. Oh, wonderfully oblivious. He looked at me, dropped one on, on one knee, took my hand and said, I'm proposing to you, you silly nincompoop. The cabbage parcels were his way of saying he wanted to marry me. When he finished talking, I just burst out laughing. I see why Liliana's been worried recently, but I'll never forget him. But if he, but my own child to do this, it makes me feel like a bad parent. Thank you for telling me about it. I should have realised sooner. And with that, we can return to Liliana. I quite like that thing of it's like... It's going to be hard for parents to, for children to get when their parents move on and for parents to understand the effect that's having on children. This kind of addresses that quite nicely, I think. Did it remind you of Dad? Yay! You're the best. I'm glad everything worked out. I mean, yeah, I'm, thanks. I mean, thank you very much. Now, can we get, we can get back to being a family again. And that completes that quest and completes um, the cycle of request-based quests for, for that family. I'm going to take this Earth Cloak off uh, while I remember... And we have one more quest line I want to do this episode. We're going to start off in Tranquil Square. And he is here. This man, Kenny Rohan. He, the, the incredibly cool name, and he has one of the only people here to have a surname. Uh, and it's named after one of the one of the kingdoms of the Lord of the Rings, which is very cool. Um, but he is a real traveling man, um, and it's difficult to necessarily pin him down. But Tranquil Square is often a good place to get him. What is it? The crowd by the residential district bridge has thinned lately, and the mysterious light at which they used to gaze has vanished. But the question is, do you know why? Could you go into more detail? I can see you know little, but I won't reveal why. You should investigate it yourself. It does sound like a very interesting mystery. Well said, boy. You have great potential. So, a mysterious light that appeared in the lake after the attack has disappeared and the residents miss it. Discover the mystery behind the light. We have seen this light, we swam past it during the King Squeeze stuff and I did point out that it was there, but it's gone now obviously. Collect information from colony residents. You have an ambitious spirit and it will serve you well. Report to me once you discover the truth of this little mystery. No problem, leave it to me. So, there's actually two routes through this, which lead to slightly different rewards, so I'll show, as ever, the one we aren't going to do. So if we start off by talking to Susanna. You want to solve the mystery behind the mysterious light? Tongues haven't stopped wagging since it appeared, you know. But I haven't seen it yet. They say it's a fish or a ghost, but I don't believe them. Francoise is the one who's actually seen it, so you should ask her. You want to ask about the mysterious light, you say? Yeah, I went to go and take a look at it the other night. I'm certain it was a fish. A fish that glowed like a firefly. It kept on spinning around in the same place. I'm sure its glow was the fish's way of calling its mate. It was very moving, you know. You know, I just remembered that Dionysus saw it too. Why not talk to him? You want to know about that glowing fish? Hell, it's the talk of the colony. I can see why you're curious. I only remembered his voice slightly further through. But the question on everyone's lips is why it disappeared. Forget for that fish is in fact the legendary firefly fish. Though it is usually called a fish, it is usually seen circling the sky, but once every millennium or so it descends into the lake. Once deep enough underwater, it lays its eggs upon the lake's bed. We witness one of the rarest of nature's miracles at work. It's just a shame it's all over now. And with that, we can return to Kenny Rohan. Yes, he wanders around the place, the slippery bastard. So you think it's the firefly fish that appears once in a millennium? I see. However, oh, there's one small hole in your conclusion. There's no such thing as a firefly fish. Don't believe everything you hear. You should have asked an expert. So, I've cut out exactly what the explanation was, but that completes it through that route. But we want to see the explanation. We will have to go through the proper route. So, here's what actually happened. So we start off at the entrance of the military district at night is this man here, Arno. Gathering information about the mysterious light, I see. He's called Arno, so I assume he is French. You only need to take one look and the answer should be obvious. Could you go into more detail? 
You still don't know? Well, I'll be, sacre bleu, how can you still not get it? Well, it won't do you any good if I just tell you the answer. Ah, uh, how about I point you in the right direction? You should talk to a little girl in the French district. <laughs> I genuinely didn't mean to say French district there, it just kind of, my brain just went down a road and I ran with it. She is only around during the day though. Come back and speak to me after you've spoken to her. So, indeed, if we head over to the residential district, nearly said the French district again, head to the, the, the third arrondissement. And indeed, we'll find Noreen bolting past. Huh? You need to talk to me? Oh, the mysterious light. I wanted to go and see it, but my mum said I couldn't go. Too bad it's gone now, but I think my dad knows more about it. With that, if we speak to Arno again. You spoke to her, then. So what's the difference between now and when you spoke to her? Well, the time is different, or the street lights are on. The time is different is what means the street lights are on, but there we go. Exactly. It was an ether lamp. During the attacks, a massive debris fell onto the central plaza. It was blocking the way, so we pushed it into the water. And now, as you've realized, there was an ether lamp in the debris. It even managed to stay lit, even under water. But the ether must have run out, causing the light to fade. That's all I know. What you do with this information is up to you. With that, we need to return to Kenny. Unfortunately, we're not even done with Arno yet for this episode. There's going to be more of that outrageous accent uh, to come. What is it? So you think it was a broken ether lamp? Well, you are correct. You have solved the mystery. Take this in prize in recognition of your excellent detective skills. So he gives us the Bloody Roar, a unique weapon from Ryan, which is slightly better than uh, Art Attack, Auto Attack, Stealth, Gem. And we get a level up, which is kind of cool. And Affinity Coins all round. Apart from for Dunban. Is the Bloody Roar actually any good? It is not! But there we go. Well, it's not as good as the Phalanx. With that, Kenny Rohan offers a second quest that follows this one immediately. So we know why the lamp rent out. Now for the real issue. Should we fix it or not? If we fix it, all who found comfort in its glow will be pleased. Although, on the other hand, the light is really just a light. An accidental, albeit captivating, distraction on the road to healing. I think sentiment and emotion are stopping them from moving on. That's why I'm entrusting the decision to fix the lamp to you. If you do nothing, then the situation stays the same. The people will be forced to move on and overcome their pain. But if you fix the lamp, things will go back to how they were before. They will be distracted from their pain, for now, but not forever. The choice is yours, friends. Do we have the right to decide such a thing? Doing nothing is also an option, so the decision really comes down to whether you fix it or not. Best to make a firm decision now, once and for all. Then everyone can get on with living their new lives. So this gives us out like a light where we have to decide what to do. Here, take this ether cylinder. If you want to do nothing, then throw the cylinder off the bridge. If you want to fix it, go see Arno and ask him how to do it. Everything clear? This also has branching roots, as you'd probably expect. Uh, and anyone who's watched my Mass Effect Let's Plays or anything like that will know I'm a big fan, generally, of moving on. Even if stuff is difficult and painful at the time, it tends to be better to kind of rip off the bandage and just kind of go for it. However, while I will be doing that, that of course means there's something else that we won't be doing first. So, let's show the alternative pathway. Uh, you thought we were done with this man, actually I told you we weren't. You want to fix the lamp? That's not going to be easy. You'll need an ether cylinder and two crabble fixed parts. I can see you've already got the ether cylinder. You'll just need to get the fixed parts from drunk crabbles. I said drunk, but I meant junk. Bring me the items and I'll fix it. I'm interested to get a look at this lamp anyway. So confusingly, um, fixed crabble parts come from junk crabbles in the ether mine. So we've got to make ourselves a little trip out there and note as well. Here's an interesting thing. No, a lot of shit is in red there. Um, and a l all of the lower level stuff in the ether mine is inaccessible. The ether mine is a wealth of ether crystals. Um, but after you... Um, after you defeat Zord, they go. Um, they go forever. You can never get into the lower levels of the ether mine again. Um, there's nothing you can actually miss there other than maybe a couple of landmarks. But I think all the landmarks are literally um, directly in the path. Um... Of you go down to date to fight Zord anyway. So, let's go bash some crabbles. Did I finish the Collectopedia in here? I did not. We've got one more part to get. I'll do that in a few episodes time. I don't want to do it now because I'm not actually doing this. 
Right, that's one. And that's two, brilliant. Let's return to Arno. You got the parts, then I'll hand me the ether cylinder. I'll fix it and be back in a jiffy. <laughs> it's a little way off, but this will take some time, a short while, so just wait here. I really fucked up that one. I thought I was going to drown for a second back there, but I managed to fix the lamp. It's starting to get its glow back. I've never done anything like that before. It was interessant. I've got some things to look over. You should head back too. And we will notice if we head over to the break in the bridge. It's actually not there yet. Uh, we need to speak to Kenny Rohan first, and he's going for a late night trip to the old commercial district. He really does wander around a lot. I wasn't kidding. You fixed it? Good work. It's going to be lively around the bridge every night. I'm glad everything works out. People didn't read that properly. People are only getting false hope from a fake thing, we'll have said something like that. But I suppose there are people who need something like that. The scars of battle are deep. Your decision was not incorrect. And that completes it through that route. Um, let's go and have a quick look at the light as well. Oh, is that Dunban leveling up as well? Yes, it was. Uh, let's have a little look. Well, I mean, Dunban's gonna level up when we do this the proper way as well. Oh, and he learned an art. We haven't even seen any of his arts yet, but he's learned a new one. Look at that. Ah, yes, there it is. I'll turn the um, past visualizer off just quickly so you can actually see what it looks like circling around. If you get close to it, it disappears. Um, so you can only just see it from here. Um, caught in the currents. Anyway, with that, let's show the routes that we're actually going to take, which is to let people move on. And this one is as simple as let's throw the ether cylinder away. It's for the good of the colony. Now let's go and talk to Kenny again. So you threw it away. You've not made the wrong choice. And now people won't be gathering there to admire it night after night. We'll all be looking to the future instead of some lamp in the water. I'm glad everything worked out. The lamp provided people with brief comfort, but nothing more. There was no right answer, but I would call this a fine outcome. That's very much Xenoblade's philosophy there. There's no right answer, but you can always get to a fine outcome, one way or the other. And that's Dunban actually leveling up and getting that out that, ti that time. And we will hold it there. It's been a long episode, uh, and next episode we're actually going to be able to get on and show off Dunban a little bit. And we are going to go to Satoral Marsh, which is not my favourite area in the game, but one of the top few ones and definitely my favourite uh, so far in certain very specific ways. Um, basically, it's shit in the daytime, but it's really cool at night and it almost balances out. Um, I hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much, and good day.